Hi, welcome to this look at the January weather prospects. This month is often considered to be the bleak midwinter, but I think it really depends on your definition because in recent years, rather than cold and frosty and snowy, it has often been mild, wet and windy. So, how are things shaping up this time? Well, I'll begin by taking a look at the first week of this forecast period using the sequence generated with data from the GFS model. It runs from 18 GMT, Monday the 3rd. Now, at the outset, there's, an, there's a band of rain and hill snow across northern Britain that's steadily moving southwards. There's mild air ahead of it, but behind it, cold Arctic air is sweeping southwards. And in the short term, that makes its way down across the whole of the UK. There will be some wintry showers around for a time, then a ridge of high pressure builds in from the west and it brings the likelihood of a widespread frost on Wednesday night. But what we can see already is that weather fronts in the Atlantic are queuing up and they are pushing in quite quickly. And that really sets a pattern for the rest of the first week. You can see rain moves eastwards, it's preceded by sleet or snow in the north, then we're into a showery spell, then more rain, showers, more rain, and that continues through to here, which is 21 GMT, Monday the 10th. By then, there are some indications of high pressure beginning to build a little bit from the south, so perhaps becoming drier and milder, particularly in southern and central Britain, with the most unsettled conditions becoming focused on the north and the west at least according to this computer model run. I think it's just worth taking a look at some air mass uh, temperature forecast charts associated with it. So this is 15 GMT, Tuesday the 4th. We have the cold Arctic air sweeping southwards. There's the UK and the blue shading is indicating those lower temperatures at the upper air level. Moving forwards to Thursday the 6th, by then, the cold air has been shunted eastwards into continental Europe. There's a warm sector moving through, but upstream there's another uh, pool of cold air waiting to make its way towards us. By Friday the 7th, it has done. But again, if we look into the Atlantic, there's another milder pulse of air advancing. And by Monday the 10th of January, on this particular uh, series of charts, we can see this fairly mild or even quite warm upper level air moving across the UK. It's shown by the yellows and greens. With colder and milder air moving over the UK throughout the first week, how will temperatures at the ground level respond? Well, I'll just show a few charts to illustrate how things may develop. This is 15 GMT, Tuesday the 4th. At this point, we've got the cold Arctic air covering all of the UK. So, single figures, it's a cold day in all areas. Moving forwards to Thursday the 6th, now the ridge of high pressure is built in from the west, so it should be a calm and quiet start to the day, therefore a widespread frost. 9 GMT, these are minimum temperatures which have been forecast widely below zero Celsius. Jumping forwards to 15 GMT on the same day, at this point, mild air is beginning to push in from the west, so temperatures are climbing in southwest England, Wales, and Northern Ireland. It's still colder as you head eastwards. Finally, Monday the 10th, 15 GMT, very mild air over the UK at this point, and two meter temperatures responding very well. 12s, 13s in southern and central Britain, very mild for what is really approaching the coldest time of the year. Still somewhat cooler as you head northwards and particularly in Scotland there, but a mild end to the week. It's also, I think, just worth mentioning for wind speeds. This is the MoGreps chart showing wind gusts for London. Uh, 40 miles an hour there on the 6th of January, according to many of the runs in the model. Also, around the 8th of January, there's some, some of the individual runs going for windy conditions again. So, there is that potential there. Going up to Aberdeen, and here we see an even windier picture. 
60 mile an hour gusts on the 4th and the 5th, and they're 50 to 60 again, according to many of the runs on the 6th of January, and it remains windy on some days as we head forwards. All in all, a very typical first week of this forecast, I would suggest, compared to many recent Januaries. It's a mobile Atlantic-driven picture, colder air making its way down from the north briefly, but it doesn't become established further weather fronts quickly pushing from the west. What about the second week of a forecast period? At this point, it's all about the ensemble data, trends and probabilities rather than the specifics, starting with a 16-day GEFS plot for London and southern England. Across the top, upper air temperatures here are close to or above the average for much of the second week. The thick black line is a 30-year norm, the thick purple one is the ensemble mean, so you can see it often stays a little bit above the black line. In terms of rainfall, along the bottom here, well, there are some spikes to begin with, but then it turns increasingly dry. That would tend to suggest that high pressure is building, and I'll come back to that in a moment. But in terms of the two meter temperatures, this is the data table again for London and the southeast. Through the second week, the Light greens are dominant. There is some dark green there and it increases a little bit later on, but the light greens remain the majority. Those are runs forecasting maximums of between 6 and 10 Celsius. Therefore, most of them are at least a little bit above the average. Going up to Glasgow, upper air temperatures here, close to average through much of the period. There the Purple lines fluctuating again, sometimes a little below the thick black line, sometimes above it. In terms of rainfall, there are more spikes here than there were on the London chart. What that suggests is that high pressure will probably be building, but from the south, with Atlantic disturbances continuing to influence weather more in the north of the UK. The all-important snow row at this time of year, it was very low on the London plot, on the Glasgow one, it's not too exciting either. It reaches a maximum there at the beginning of the second week of nine. It then drops down to uh, four, six, eight at the very end. So if you remember, that can take a maximum value of 33. If, all, if it goes for 33, it means that all of the runs in the GEFS and the GFS operational run are forecasting snow to fall at a given time. Numbers this low suggest a relatively small chance of snow falling on any given day. Two metre temperatures for Glasgow, uh, lower than London, generally closer to the average, maybe a little bit below. At this point through the second week, the light greens dominate, they have a majority, but the light, they then decrease as we move further forwards, dark greens increasing and a little bit of blue as well. I think to, just to summarise that, it, it fits in with the upper air temperature profile with the colder conditions relative to the average more likely to be in the north than the south of the UK. But it's not looking particularly cold anywhere through this period. I mentioned that the GEFS data was suggesting that high pressure would be building from the south. Well, the idea is strongly supported by the European Ensemble mean. This chart is for Thursday the 13th of January, and you can see the 1,030 millibar line there is cutting across Northern England and Northern Ireland. At this time of the year, the average is close to 1,011, so it's well above it. I think the strength of the pressure build northwards is greater, according to the ECM ensemble, than it is on the GEFS. The difference, therefore, would likely be that the drier conditions would spread further northwards, and the risk of frost and fog would probably be increasing uh, more sharply in southern and central regions if the European data is correct. So, where does that leave things as we go through the second half of the month? It's all very, very tenuous, of course, at this range, so there the warnings are. But I'm also going to say that I'm not very comfortable on this update with how the data for the second half of the month 
blends with the first half. The, the problem is the 35-day GEFS runs come out 24 hours later, so in that sense they're already out of date and they don't always marry up nicely with the latest 16-day plots. Given those limitations, I'll go ahead and show you the pressure anomaly chart for the week beginning Sunday the 16th of January. On these plots, the blues indicate a negative anomaly, so a lower than average pressure through the week as a whole. The yellows and browns are a positive one. It's as ever very easy to read more into these than one should. I think what I'll say about this is perhaps higher than average pressure to the west of the UK there, indicating less of an Atlantic influence than would usually be the case, so not so much mobility showing up. Lower pressure there to the southeast, suggesting um, that there won't be a strong area of high pressure uh, to the south and the east of the UK. All in all, therefore, perhaps rather chilly conditions, maybe dry predominantly with an increased risk of frost and fog, but it is very tenuous based on that. Now, moving forwards to the week beginning the 23rd, at this point, there's more mobility perhaps showing it's making its way towards the UK from the west, a, a strong negative anomaly here heading up towards Iceland uh, with pressure higher there than the norm as you head eastwards into central and eastern parts of Europe. Taking those two charts together, perhaps a trend from a settled period early on, rather cold, to a more changeable one later as the Atlantic begins to return. Looking at the air mass temperature anomaly charts, Week beginning the 16th of January, and there's blue shading over the UK and much of the rest of Europe. A negative anomaly at the 850 HPA level, about 1500 metres above our heads. Going forwards to the week beginning the 23rd, the UK remains blue. Taking those two charts together, it would suggest at face value at least, a cold of an average air mass staying dominant for that two-week period. But I'm going to throw in a big caveat here. I've looked at the individual runs and there seem to be a small number which are bringing in much colder air. Now I think those are probably skewing things here by dragging down the ensemble mean. In turn, that is generating the negative anomaly. If those very cold runs, which are in a small minority, were stripped out from this plot, I suspect the anomaly here would be gone, and we'd have something very close to a 30-year average, perhaps even a little above it by this stage of the month. So looking at the 2-metre temperature plot for London, so the temperatures we actually experience down at the surface, to begin with here, the ensemble mean, minimum and maximum, those are shown by the two red lines, stay a little below the thick black line, which is the 30-year average. But later on, they trend upwards, and so they, they then become very close to it. That suggests, after a rather cold start, temperatures are returning towards the average later on. Looking at the surface level pressure plot for York to see if that can offer any in insights. Early in the second half of the month, it looks like the ensemble mean is above the 30 year average. The, the pressure it shows is close to 1,015, 1,016 millibars there, but around about anyway. And the norm is close to 1,010, 1,011. So all the runs averaged out are going slightly above the uh, 30 year norm. Then towards the end of the month, it's dipping downwards, suggesting possibly that the Atlantic will be returning, weather fronts moving in from the west as pressure falls away south eastwards, probably. But it, as I say, it's just for suggestion from these charts, and it would probably tie in to a certain extent 
with that upper air temperature anomaly beginning to fade later on, particularly, as I say, if the colder minority of runs is taken out. So, to summarise the month, the first week it's going to be cold for time with wintry showers, particularly in the north and west. But there will be wet and windy spells, a risk of snow in the north, mostly over high ground. Towards the end of the week it turns milder. Week two, it's a mixed start with showers or longer spells of rain. There could still be some hill snow in the north. The expectation then is for it to begin to turn more settled as high pressure builds northwards. Temperatures generally close to or even above the average, particularly in the south. Although towards the end of that second week it could be cooling off in the south as high pressure becomes uh, more dominant. The second half of the month, confidence is extremely low, but there's perhaps a signal for a drier period to develop as high pressure dominates. That would lead to an increased risk of frost and fog. Daytime temperatures could also be quite low. Towards the end of the month, pressure begins to fall and it turns more changeable again as disturbances return from the Atlantic. Well, there we have it, the first month of 2022. The bleak midwinter, well, it depends on your definition, as I suggested at the start. This does not look like an old fashioned style January with lots of snowy and frosty periods. Nonetheless, there could be some wintry conditions through the early part of the month, and again, towards the middle as high pressure leads to an increased risk of frost and fog. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. If you did, then please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Bye now.